In this video, I'm gonna share 10 big mistakes you wanna be sure to avoid on your trip to Europe. Mistakes that will cost you money, waste your time, and even make you look rude without you even knowing it. Hey guys, Nick here from Away Together. My wife Allie and I have traveled extensively throughout Europe and we've had the joy of introducing several other travelers to Europe and European culture. And I've noticed some commonalities along the way in terms of questions and mistakes being made. So the purpose of this video is to help you avoid those mistakes and hopefully give you some useful tips along the way. So noteworthy things we're gonna talk about are money, transportation, how to design an itinerary, and a few other blunders that you wanna avoid. Now, just a quick note before we get started, this is not meant as a harsh criticism of tourists or of Americans in general. It's all in the spirit of love, okay? But don't at me when we get to points six, seven, and eight. You'll see what I mean. The first big mistake revolves around how to get cash for your trip to Europe. You definitely don't want to use the currency exchange at the airport when you arrive at your destination. They charge crazy fees and it's gonna cost you big time. What I always tell people to do and what I always personally do myself is go to a bank in my destination country and use their ATM. Now, depending on where you bank back home, there is probably still gonna be a small ATM fee associated with using that bank's ATM. And I try to circumvent this in two ways. The first way is by making a large withdrawal. I tend to maybe only make one to two withdrawals from an ATM per trip if it's a 10 day to two week type trip to Europe. The second way you could circumvent this is by opening an account with a bank that offers a checking account with $0 international ATM fees. Charles Schwab Bank is one example of these. Now this is super important. Not all ATMs are created equal. Use an ATM at a bank. Do not use one of those Euronet ATMs. Those things are a complete scam. If you're stuck without options and a Euronet ATM is your only option, okay, go ahead. I've had to do that before, but do not, I repeat, do not use dynamic currency conversion. When you're making your withdrawal, you will have the option to choose between leaving it in the currency of your destination country versus withdrawing it in your home currency. And that may seem like really nice, but there are massive, massive fees associated with it. I repeat, this is a complete scam. And another pro money tip, when you pay for a meal in a restaurant, if they do accept card, they may ask you if you wanna pay in dollars or euros or whatever the local currency is. Always just choose the local currency. The same kind of thing is going on there and you will end up usually paying more if you ask to pay in your currency. The next big mistake I see people make when they travel to Europe is not trying to learn at least a little bit of the language. Learning at least a few basic phrases of the country or countries you'll be visiting can make life a lot easier. You'd be surprised how much learning just a handful of phrases can improve your confidence, speed things up for you, and increase your street cred with locals. Some great basic phrases to learn in any country that you're gonna visit. Hello, goodbye, please, excuse me. Toilet is a great word to know. How to order your favorite beverage. One that I find comes up a lot actually is how to ask for the check in a restaurant. The reason why that's kind of shocking, you know, in the USA, a lot of times somebody is bringing you your check and kind of shooing you out of the restaurant. In Europe, man, they're like, you practically have to beg to get the check. So knowing how to ask for the check in the local language can be very helpful. There are tons of ways to dip your toe in the water with learning the language. Duolingo, Babbel, probably my favorite and the method that's worked best for me is the Pimsler method, which I think it was really effective because it revolved around hearing and speaking rather than reading and writing, which makes sense, right? On your trip, you're probably not gonna do a whole lot of writing in the local language. You'll most likely be doing a little bit of listening and speaking. One thing I loved about the Pimsleur method, which by the way, isn't a sponsor or anything, I just found it really useful, is the first thing they taught me how to say was, I don't understand Italian. Io non capisco l'italiano and how to ask if the other person knew English. Le capisci l'inglese? 
I found that even knowing those phrases and how to pronounce them correctly helped me so much. The thing is, many Europeans are multilingual, and a lot of them, especially in more popular destinations, speak at least some English. Thank you, imperialism, I guess? But it's still very helpful and respectful to at least try. Worst case, you're gonna learn something. It's fun, it adds to the adventure. One last tip about language, make sure to download Google Translate before your trip, and it's super helpful to download the language of the country that you're visiting before you leave. That way, if you're ever without signal or whatever, you've got it pre-baked in your app, and man, that app is loaded with a bunch of useful features. A tremendous mistake when visiting Europe is ignoring public transportation. Europe has an amazing, comprehensive, and generally efficient transportation network with trains, buses, trams, metros that can get you around pretty quickly and cheaply. Opting for public transport is often more economical and convenient, and it also gives you the authentic experience of traveling like a local. Speaking as an American, I think there are many cases where we're just used to renting a car or having to get a taxi or an Uber. It's just the default. But in Europe, there could only be some cases where that's your best option. In fact, in many cases, it's gonna be the worst option. In cities, parking is really hard to come by and it's ridiculously expensive. In a lot of cases, a train is gonna be a pretty affordable way to get around. Not always, a bus, very cheap way to get around. And look, there are definitely cases where the car is gonna be your best option. You wanna take this side trip or this day trip. But my advice is just don't go in assuming that if you wanna go somewhere, you have to have a car. And in those cases where you want the car for the day trip, consider only renting it for the day that you need it and not your entire trip to Europe. A big mistake to avoid when traveling to Europe is overstuffing your itinerary. It can be really tempting when you first visit Europe to try to go everywhere and see everything, but it's just a recipe for disaster. My very first trip to Europe, I visited like nine or 10 countries in 32 days, which is an average of like three days per country. And in some countries, I visited more than one city, which is even less time. Let me ask you, would you try to visit all 50 US states in 50 days? Like other than for the achievement of doing that? No, probably not. Why? Because you wouldn't actually be seeing those places. You'd be seeing the inside of your car or a plane. And the same is true, I find, when people visit Europe. They wanna spend one day or maybe two days per city, move quickly between all the major sites, and they really just don't leave enough time to be. Now, I understand we've all got limited vacation time, most likely, and I'm all about maximizing my time when I'm on a trip. However, I do believe that you'll have a deeper, richer, and more fulfilling experience generally if you slow down and, as Rick Steve says, assume you'll come back. Nowadays, when I plan a European itinerary for myself or for someone else, I actually don't tend to even plan at the country level. I tend to plan at the region level. For example, a Northern Italy trip or a Bavaria trip. I find that when you can center your trip around a region or maybe a topic, it can just give you such a more fulfilling experience. And as you close in the parameters, you can really just get so much more out of it. The same approach can be said when you're on the ground in the cities that you're visiting. Avoid making minute by minute itineraries that cram in every tour and every museum. And focus on the essentials and the areas of high interest to you. Now the flip side of all of this is not having a game plan at all. And that's actually a mistake I see all too commonly as well. I know people who have literally spent thousands of dollars on plane tickets and lodging only to go to a new destination and sit in a bar and drink all day long. Like you literally could have stayed in your hometown to do that. Now maybe you do actually have intentions to go out and see something, but you haven't researched the logistics or the timing of how or when to do those things. Many of the major tourist sites in Europe sell tickets in advance, and many of them sell out 
weeks or even months in advance. So it's best to do your research way ahead of time. And don't assume you'll be able to just show up and walk in. I like to try and get those skip the line tickets in advance anyways, because I don't really like standing in line. In that same vein, it's also always worth it to research and try to get reservations for any of the restaurants that you might care about dining at. And in a lot of cases, that doesn't have to happen way, way in advance. Like we always like to ask our host if we're staying in an Airbnb where they would recommend. So a lot of times it's like the day we arrive in a new city, we try to make a reservation for a place for dinner later that week. Our personal philosophy here at Away Together is striking a balance between seeing those important cultural and historical sites and leaving plenty of room for freestyle. And hey, if you're getting value out of this, please hit that like button so YouTube will know to suggest it to other travelers like you. Another big mistake I see when people visit Europe, especially for the first time, is not expecting things to be different. I don't mean knowing every little thing that will be different. I mean not expecting that some things will be different. For example, you're usually gonna have to pay for water. Refills, free refills, not really a thing. Ice is a possibility, but you're usually gonna have to ask for it. If you're from the USA, this one's gonna feel really weird to you, but you're gonna have to pay for bathrooms a lot of times. Am I telling you that I love all of these things? No, not necessarily. But I am trying to save you some heartache. I've been around people who were visiting Europe for the first time who I feel were kind of expecting to find America in Europe. Well, I don't know if you know how expectations work, but in my opinion, it's on them that they didn't have a good time. Another unfortunate way I've seen this play out is when people don't get at least a little bit adventurous with the local cuisine. And then they subsist on a diet of like McDonald's and Starbucks and Hard Rock Cafe. I think part of travel, at least European travel, right? Because we're not just going and staying at a beach resort in Florida. Make an effort to try the local food and embrace the unique differences. Even if you don't love all the nuances and idiosyncrasies, think of it like a game. Even a trip to the grocery store in a new country can be exhilarating and fun. In my opinion, your trip and your life is too short to get bent out of shape over minor things. A big mistake travelers make when visiting Europe is not taking time to research the local customs and etiquette. A great example of this is mealtimes in Spain. If you're trying to eat lunch at noon, you're probably gonna be eating alone. Lunch is at 2 p.m. Dinner is gonna be starting around like nine. Tipping is a perfect example of this. In many table service restaurants across Europe, tipping is much more modest than what you might be used to. Usually waitstaff is much more fairly compensated, so tipping is more of a nice gesture than it is a necessary piece of their economic survival. Or it can commonly be an easy way to settle the bill. You're just rounding up. But this varies highly depending on country and sometimes even the distinct region, so be sure to do your research. Oftentimes, the service charge will actually be built into your bill and it'll even say this on the menu or the receipt. Now in more touristy areas and restaurants, sometimes it will say in English, tip not included, when in fact the service is already built in. We've even had the waiter kind of cajole us about tip in those situations before. In other countries like Iceland, zero tip is expected. You might even get weird looks if you leave a tip. And in other places, it's seen rude to leave just a single euro. Like it would be better to leave no tip at all or two euro, but leaving one is like a slap in the face somehow. I hope I haven't thoroughly confused you about tipping. The point here was to show you a bunch of examples, not explain how tipping in Europe works. The point is to do your research and to try to respect the local way of doing things. You're a guest here. Another huge mistake I see is assuming that Europeans are rude or that they don't like you. This is completely false. As a US traveler, I would say one of the top five questions I am always asked by people who live here is if people were nice to us while we were gone. Like there's this prevailing belief that the entire world just hates America. And I'm not saying that we don't have enemies, but there's this common fear that American travelers are just despised. This couldn't be further from the truth. In my experience traveling Europe, the truth is what Europeans don't like is tourists who are loud, rude, and disrespectful. If you're a European watching this, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments 
below. But in my experience, we have never met someone that was rude or mean to us simply because of our nationality abroad. That said, when you travel to Europe, you should act like you're a guest in someone else's country. Be kind, smile, be humble. If there is one virtue to cultivate as a traveler, and maybe life in general, it's humility. Leave your arrogance at home. Part of being a traveler is saying, hey, maybe my way of life isn't the only way. And I find that when you carry humility with you, the people that you encounter are much more likely to treat you with respect and kindness and hospitality. A big mistake I see travelers make when they visit Europe is not leveraging local guides and experiences. Some of my fondest memories from all of my European adventures come down to authentic local experiences I couldn't have otherwise had without an experienced guide or teacher. From seeing how Parmigiana Reggiana is made in Italy, to paragliding in Innsbruck, Austria, to learning to make pierogi in Krakow, Poland, to creating authentic ceramic pottery outside Florence in Montelupo Fiorentino. These are unique and memorable experiences that I will truly never forget. And I think there's multiple cool things at play here. First of all, you get to meet a real local person and get to know them and kind of understand their way of life. And second, you get to break out of the monotony of only seeing things with your eyes. You get to actually experience it and be a part of it yourself. There's lots of great ways to find guides. I usually use uh, Airbnb experiences or Viator. Just be careful to read the reviews. I would not be the first person to do an experience if it's got zero reviews. There are scams out there. And make sure to ask your guide or your host questions, things like where they like to eat, or even to take a look at your itinerary and see maybe what else you should do or what you could skip. I find that these folks really do want to help. That's why they're in the hospitality business in the first place a lot of times. The final mistake is bringing the wrong bag and packing the wrong stuff. And in this video, I share my exact recommendations on mistakes you should avoid and what to bring with you instead. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.